everyone. Welcome to Greybeard's Garage. I'm Ron. Uh, I've got a little project here for us today. What we have here, I've got a 2014 Ultra Limited. And what we're going to do is we're going to tie in my horn into the alarm system. Uh, a lot of you that have Harleys are aware that those that come with the fob ignition system uh, generally have alarm from the factory that basically flashes the lights and interrupts the ignition, but that's all it does. If you want an audible alarm, you have to spend like another hundred plus dollars for the Harley module that plugs in and it is covered and gives you an audible alarm. Or other folks go in another route and use a little piezo siren that you can get between about five and eight dollars from Radio Shack or Amazon, something like that, and tip it in. But you get just that little high pitched tweak, which I don't find is acceptable. Everybody ignores it. So what I have on this bike is I have the Wolo Bad Boy Horn, which is a dual trumpet electric air horn, and it gets your attention pretty quick. Uh, I've got the relay mounted for it right here on the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap into the harness here for, for my rear turn signal on the left side here. And whenever the alarm goes off, it flashes the lights. Therefore, I'm going to tap into this line right here that goes to my turn signal. So whenever the alarm triggers, the signal flashes, it's going to trigger off the horn. And what I'm going to do also is I'm going to incorporate a switch right here because uh, when you're riding the bike, you need to disconnect the circuit from your turn signal to the horn or as soon as you start it up and you hit your turn signal your horn's going to go off. So it's going to be just a simple toggle rocker switch and I'm have mounted right on top of the uh, relay here. That way whenever you know you park the bike you reach down, flip the switch and your horn is going to be activated when the alarm goes off. I say you just got to remember to turn it off before you take off again. But uh, you're going to be using a little black rocker switch which is this one right here. It's a simple little couple of dollar switch and it's going to be nondescript sitting right on top of the relay here. Most people won't even notice it is there. So that's going to be the goal for today. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get the multimeter out here and we're going to see if I can locate which wire it is that the turn signal works on. turn signal activated. Let's see if I can figure out which one of these is which. What I'm doing is using my multimeter here to pierce the wire going back to my rear turn signals. covering back a little bit to expose this yellow wire then I'm going to tap into it and we're going to run a wire along this existing wiring harness underneath the edge of the tank and down here to this relay. All right let me get what I need together here and I'll be back in just a minute. All right we're back. Uh, I think I got everything I need so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to break loose this relay for the horn. Get a couple of zip ties holding it in place. Alright, so here's my relay. And what we got going on here on this relay is we got hot and ground going to the horn, and then we got the factory leads positive and negative from the original horn. So what I'm going to do is pull these off and I need to tap in the wire coming from my turn signal into this wire right here. So I'm going to pop those off. Better access to it. Factory wires for 
red and the black. Now, there are a couple different ways I can do this. I can tap into this wire here, which I really don't want to alter the factory harness. I could actually just come in and solder directly onto my uh, terminal here on my relay. What I'm going to need to do is figure out which one of these two is going to trigger that off. There's 85 right there. Alright, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and tap in to my wire over here. There we go. And where did my pliers go? There we go. Alright, so. Back on this wire a little bit, give me some room. I'm just going to use a simple butt connector here. Put that wire. Strip this back enough to get a connector on to. using here is some, uh, I can't tell if it's 16 or 18 gauge wire. This wire is pretty stiff which is what I want because I'm going to be uh, routing this along the uh, frame rail here. You can use any automotive wire but this wire that I'm using is actually an aircraft wire that's high temperature and high amperage. So for me serves my purpose. So what I'll do is twist these two together here. I'll trim that back just a hair. Don't want to cooperate. That connector, clip it down. Just make sure the wire is fully seated and get a good tight crunch. You don't want it coming loose. So what I'm gonna do now? Turn the signal on. And see if I've got the right wire doing the right thing on the right terminal.
fired my horn on. Yeah, it accomplished. So now what we're going to do now is route this wire along my factory harness and down to this relay. I think I may, uh, hmm, how do I want to do this? I want to do, I really don't want to alter that harness. So what I might end up doing is just doing a solder connection. Actually, I might just make me a little short jump from wire. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So let me gather my connections. I'll make a short little jumper wire, and we'll go from there. All right, so I've got my uh, wire routed. It's coming off my turn signal tap along the factory harness. Make sure you zip tie everything out of the way. It's not going to come in contact with anything hot. Make it neat as possible. It runs up inside the frame, underneath the tank, comes down and comes out right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the switch incorporated here. We're going to do that. We're going to use a female spade connector. Put that on there. One side of our switch. Just like so. And what I gotta do now is make the jumper wire that's gonna go from here to our relay. And this also allow us to tap in to our factory horn without having to modify any of the wiring here. The way I'm going to do that is going to be a simple Y connector. So I'm going to need a little short piece to go from the switch down to my relay. So the relay is going to be here. The switch here. Gremlins. Wow, did my pliers go? Turn my hand, you dummy. Um, <laughs> uh, sometimes you need a little help. So the insulation on these aircraft wires are pretty tough. factory horn, uh, horn wire. This would normally be the connector that's on the relay.
lives. Like I said, the insulation on these aircraft wires are pretty tough. There we go. Take this, put this into one single connector. plug into my relay. This is going to allow the factory horn switch to plug in. Then this one's going to go to my switch that is going back to uh, my turn signal tap. So what you do now is see how long I need to make this one. Relay is going here. Switch on top.
Так. Probably come back here later and put some uh, heat shrink over all these yellow wires and connectors and whatnot to kind of hide it in place. And eventually, I'm going to make a nice aluminum cover to go over this horn. I don't feel like spending 40 bucks on one that Kiriakin makes that I believe is just possibly chrome plated plastic or some cheap uh, cast aluminum. I mean, uh, Nothing against Kiriakin, but they sell this horn kit that's this exact same horn with the cover for like $140. And I got this horn off of Amazon for I believe it was $32 shift. And I was like, golly, if you buy the horn and then you go and buy their cover, you still only spent maybe like $60, $65. And how they get away with selling you know, $140, why? Because they had a little bit of a wiring harness. I'm sorry, it's sometimes the, the retail side of things just really makes me angry the way they do that. But of course, there's plenty of people out there that you know have no problem with it and they just go and buy it. Oh well, more power to you. I don't have that kind of money to waste. All right, so there's my switch on, off. Okay, we turn it on. Let's turn the ignition on and see what happens here. Works like that. So, I'm going to turn the signal on, it works. So, let's turn the ignition off and let's see if the alarm sets. I'm going to have to step away for a second to get the uh, key fob out of his range. Be right back. Works. It works. So, the alarm set. Did its thing, we're good to go. All right, so there we go. It didn't cost me a thing. I already had the wire and the connectors and the switch on hand. Uh, let me know what you think about this. It's a simple uh, procedure. It'll work on any bike. Uh, like I said, uh, you can tap it directly into your factory horn, just like I did. This is a high amperage horn, therefore it has a relay. But you can do the exact same thing that I did by just tapping into a turn signal feed on your hot side, hide your wires, come into your factory wire for your horn and just put your switch in line. That way you can disconnect it. Because if not, every time you hit the turn signal, <laughs> the horn's gonna go off. So now here I go, get ready to go for a ride. I'll walk up, turn off that switch. And now we're back to normal. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Any suggestions, ideas, comments. If you like it, dislike it, let me know. Thumbs up, please subscribe. See you on the next project.